In this video, we shall discuss the Chebyshev's theorem. We have some ideas that the variance indicates the risk when we regard x as a random variable that represents the amount of return we can get from an investment. It would be our interest to know more information as to how likely that the value of x lies not too far away from the expected value and how likely that we have a value of x which is far away from the expected value so that we can make better decisions on our investment plan based on how much risk we can bear. The Chebyshev's theorem gives us an assurance that for a wide class of probability distributions, no more than a certain fraction of values can be more than a certain distance away from the mean. The Chebyshev's theorem states that let x be the random variable which maps elements from omega to elements in R. It is an integrable random variable and we are given the information that the mean has a value which is denoted as mu and the information that the standard deviation has a value which is denoted as sigma. Then for all positive value t, the event that contains all elements from the set of omega such that the absolute value of the value of x minus mu divided by sigma is greater than or equal to t has a probability less than or equal to the value 1 over t squared. Let's refer to the following proof. Let us denote by A as the event that we are concerning, that is, the set that contains all the elements in the set of omega, which satisfy that the absolute value of x omega minus mu is greater than or equal to sigma times t. We start with writing the variance sigma square according to this formula as follows, and since we are now integrating this value with respect to p over the whole sample space, this value would be always greater than or equal to the integral of this expression with respect to p over just the set A. This is the event that contains elements which fulfills this inequality. Therefore, the perfect square of x minus mu has a value greater than or equal to the perfect square of sigma times t. So this integral is greater than or equal to this integral. And this is a constant, so after moving it out, it is to integrate 1 with respect to p over the event a. And this represents the probability of a. Therefore, we get the variance square equals to the variance square times t square times the probability of A, which is the probability of the event that contains all elements from omega, which satisfy that the absolute value of x minus mu greater than or equals to t times sigma. Therefore, after we rearrange, we get that this probability of the event is less than or equal to t squared, or we can divide both sides of this inequality by sigma to get another format of presentation for the Chebyshev's theorem. So we get the first format, which states that the probability of this event that collects all elements from sigma that fulfills the absolute value of x minus mu divided by sigma greater than or equal to t is less than or equal to 1 over t square. Or the second way of presenting the Chebyshev's theorem is that the probability of the event that contains all elements from omega which fulfills that the absolute value of x minus mu is greater than or equal to t times omega is less than or equal to 1 over t squared. Now we can also have the third format of presenting the Chebyshev's theorem. If we refer to the second presentation and we notice that t is any positive values, so if we substitute t to be 
another positive value k divided by sigma, we will be able to change this inequality into this format, where k is any positive real numbers. Therefore, we have the third presentation of the Chebyshev's theorem, which says that for all positive value k, the probability of the event that contains all elements from omega, which satisfy that the absolute value of x omega minus mu is greater than or equals to the value k, is always less than or equals to sigma squared over k squared. These three presentations of the Chebyshev's theorems are the same and give us the same implications. Let's refer to the diagram and the table here for the interpretations of the Chebyshev's theorem. Let us refer to the second inequality. In words, this inequality means that the probability that the value of x is at least t times the standard deviation away from the mean is at most 1 over t squared. It also means that the area of the two tails, which is at least t times the standard deviation away from the mean mu, is occupying at most 1 over t squared of the total area under the graph. Let's refer to the following table to have a sense of what percentage the Chebyshev's theorem tells us. For example, suppose the mean is taken to be 20 and the standard deviation is 3. If we take t equals to 2, then this inequality tells us that the probability that the value of x is at least twice the standard deviation away from the mean 20 is at most 1 over 2 squared, which is 25%. That is, the probability that x is having a value less than or equal to 14 or x is greater than or equal to 26 is at most 25%. This implies that the chance that x is falling between 14 to 26 is at least 75%. Therefore, if x is a random variable that represents the return of an investment with mean 20 and the standard duration 3, then there is at least 75% of chance that the return is between 14 to 26. From the table, we can see that if t is larger, it means that the tail is further away from the mean then the upper bound on the chance that x falls into the two tails will be smaller. You can refer to the table for more ideas. Let's refer to the third inequality. We can imagine that if we have the same mean, but if this time the variance is larger, it means that there is a larger randomness, and the distribution is generally more deviated away from the mean. So, x is more likely to be further away from the mean. Then, if we have a same value for k, and if the variance is larger, then the area of the tail will be greater. As a remark, please notice that the Chebyshev's theorem is good in telling us the probability that a random variable lies in an interval that deviates from a certain distance away from the mean. Besides, it can be applied to a wide class of random variables. However, it is a rather conservative estimate. From the proof of the Chebyshev's theorem, you can see that we just make use of the fact that x is integrable and we make use of the two known information that is the mean and the variance of the random variable. However, we didn't make use of any information on the probability d 
distribution of the random variable in the proof. If we know more information on the probability distributions of the random variable, we could have more realistic estimates. For example, if we know that the random variable has a normal distribution, then we have a 68, 95, 99.7 rule specially for normal distribution. This rule tells us that the probability that the value of x is within one standard deviation away from the mean is about 68%. And the probability that the value of x is within two standard deviation away from the mean is about 95%. And the probability that x has a value within three standard deviations away from the mean is about 99.7%. So, for example, the probability that the value of x is outside one standard deviation away from the mean would be 32%, whereas the probability that x has a value that falls outside two standard deviation away from the mean would be 5%. And the probability that x has a value that falls outside three standard deviation away from the mean would be about 0.3%. If we compare these percentages with those obtained from the Chebyshev's theorem, you will find that the percentage obtained by the Chebyshev's theorem is a more conservative percentage than this 68.95.99.7 rule, which is particularly for the normal distribution. Let's proceed to the example. Suppose the evolution of a stock price over a year is given by a random variable with mean mu equals to 20 and the standard duration sigma to be 0 0.2. And we want to prove that the probability that this stock price on a given day lies between 19 and 21 is at least 96%. The idea is that we can prove this result by showing that the probability that the stock price in a given day lie outside the interval 19 to 21 is at most 4%. Therefore, the Chebyshev's theorem help us to give this result. So we can let x be the random variable associated with this stock price. And to have x to lie outside the interval between 19 and 21, where the mean is 20, that means that the difference between x and 20 is greater than or equal to 1. This can be done by referring to the first presentation of the Chebyshev's theorem and take t equals to 5. Therefore, we can establish this inequality and this means that the probability that the absolute value of x minus 20 is less than or equal to 1 is greater than or equal to 96%. As a remark, please notice that you can also make use of the third presentation of the Chebyshev's theorem. This time, you can set k to be 1, then you can also get the corresponding results accordingly. And please notice that, in fact, we should have written this probability to be the probability that the absolute value of x minus 20 is less than 1 instead of less than or equal to 1, to be more precise. However, this doesn't matter because we use a continuous random variable to represent our situation, and for a continuous random variable, the probability that the absolute value of x minus 20 is exactly equal to 1 has a probability of 0. Therefore, this probability with less than or equal to symbol is the same as this probability with the less than symbol here.